The new model of video games where developers are always updating and changing their games make it so that while new things are added, and this is obviously great, sometimes old things need to be taken out, even if it means tens of people get angry. If you haven't been playing Rocket League since its early days, then you probably don't know about many of these changes, and if you have, it'll probably give you a good dose of nostalgia. Now I wanna just jump right into the list, so let's get into it. Number 10, the NBA antenna pack. I think a lot of people probably miss this, mainly because most people don't even use antennas and flags. Now this doesn't mean that if you'd already bought the pack, it would be taken out of your inventory. It's just there was a certain day where you couldn't buy the pack anymore. So if you are a big basketball fan, you can still rock your favorite team flag. You just had to have bought it by a certain date. Now I'm guessing this one was removed because of some sort of licensing, it probably cost Psyonix a certain amount of money, and it probably didn't make sense for it when nobody really even uses antennas anymore so it was probably a good move to get rid of it but yeah sucks for the basketball fans number nine the champion series crates now this is the same as the nba flags in some ways the only change was that the champion series crates no longer were available as drops after games so you're not going to see a champion 2 crate just drop after a game these days which makes sense when you think about it removing old crates sort of makes room for new crates in the drops again if you already have a few or like a hundred old champion crates in your inventory you don't lose those crates i'm sure that this probably had an effect on the value of these crates and on the value of some of the items within the crates but i really don't care about trading i don't know who knows though maybe 10 years from now my old champion crates will be worth like two dollars a piece number eight the crimson peppermint wheels this one is kind of funny so basically the wheels are already crimson like the original wheels they're red so there was literally no difference between the crimson and the regular peppermint wheels so when people got the crimson wheels they were like wcf mate so after the update Sonix made it so that your crimson peppermint wheels were replaced with a random color which is great if you suddenly got for example titanium white peppermint wheels but it kind of sucked if you got like burnt sienna wheels because them wheels are quite ugly number seven the bullet hit this one goes way back to rocket league's really early days and it might have actually even just been in the alpha or beta I, I i don't know i feel like it was after their release but if it was it wasn't for very long anyways basically if you hit the ball hard enough you got what's called a bullet hit basically just a stat notification now the best thing was that you didn't even have to hit the ball that hard so now literally every solid hit that you would get would probably qualify as a bullet hit so they decided this one was just kind of unnecessary and they took it out which kind of makes sense number six the no flip. Now this is one of the few mechanics discovered in Rocket League that actually had to be basically nerfed. For the most part, they've just let mechanics stay, but this one was just way too OP. So basically, there was a way to get the speed of a dodge without actually having to dodge. And you had to do this by going into your key bindings and changing key bindings, and then even once you changed it, it was really difficult to do. But you made it so that you could actually boost and dodge at the same time. Normally when you dodge, you know, you can't boost the whole time because then you'd be boosting backwards technically. But if you get the speed of a dodge, that momentum, and your car doesn't flip all the way over, hence it being called no flip you can dodge and boost at the same time which means you can hit supersonic really fast and get to the ball super fast and it was really difficult to master so they decided to just fix it and yeah i was pretty happy about this one i did spend a little bit of time learning it but i didn't like completely master it so i wasn't upset when they got rid of it number five Rocket Labs. Now this was one of the things Psyonix removed that actually made quite a few people mad. Rocket Labs was basically the place for people to go and try out the newest maps or just the maps that Psyonix was experimenting with. And I think honestly, if I could go back, I probably would have spent more time in Rocket Labs. I think now if it were available, I probably would do it because it's pretty fun. But for Psyonix, it just wasn't justified because so few people actually played in Rocket Labs. Again though, the hard part about removing things is there's always going to be a few of those dedicated people who that's all they do like they don't play anything else but snow day or rocket labs so psionics just added these maps to casual gameplay and they're always available for private matches as well something was definitely lost here though if you enjoyed playing those maps this isn't you know like the crimson painted peppermint wheels that were already crimson you didn't really lose anything there getting to play these maps regularly definitely went away when rocket labs went away who knows though maybe psionics will consider bringing this back at some point maybe after rocket league goes free to play 
All right, number four, the celebration time after a goal. Now, this one probably isn't one that you'd think of at first because it's really about something that was added. So basically, before goal explosions were added, the camera would just focus directly on the car after a goal, and that meant that the camera actually caught you sort of spinning and freestyling away from the goal as the ball was scored. And I remember being really frustrated when this change was first implemented, but you know, now I'm just used to it. And I guess I don't think it's actually that impressive anymore to be able to just spin your car around in the air. But I remember back in the day, I always thought that if I scored a goal and the team saw me like spinning away, they'd be like, whoa, this guy's good. We're probably never going to be able to beat him. And I think I thought that because when someone else would score a nice goal and then, you know, like do something cool while they're spinning away from the goal, I would be like, wow, this person's really good. It's pretty stupid, honestly. All right, number three, non-standard maps in rank. Now, this one was actually a pretty big deal. And as someone who is pretty lame and just wants car soccer to be the same on basically every map, I was happy when Starbase and Neo Tokyo just sort of left rank. I think now... I'd be okay with having them in rank because I actually appreciate the different elements of skill and having to understand walls differently and, you know, having to be able to deal with a different floor even with Neo Tokyo. Now, these maps weren't removed entirely. They were just renamed and added to unranked and then the non-standard maps were recreated as standard maps and they were left in rank. But for most players who've been around for a while, those old maps left such a bad taste that people just still don't want to play at them, even though they're literally no different than a standard map. I actually think this was a good move. I don't know, this is kind of a contentious one, but I was glad when they got rid of them. Number two, the hard reset for ranked. So there was a time in Rocket League's history when a rank reset actually meant something. You couldn't just win like three of your 10 placement matches and basically get your rank back. Everyone just started over. So whether you were a gold or a grand champion, you could potentially run into players like Kronovi. And that was really everyone's hope that you know you would just run into Kronovi basically. But the more likely scenario would be that you'd end up with three other grand champs while you were like gold. And they'd all be incredibly angry that you don't want to forfeit because you're just enjoying watching them flying over your head, but you're completely screwing over your teammate. Now this happened to me many times and it would cause a lot of anger for people, and it took a long time for the ranks to balance out, like a really long time, but it was a lot of fun. Now, the rule for lower ranked players was that you just kinda didn't play ranked for the first few days after a rank reset, but of course, I couldn't follow that rule because deep down I knew I was just as good as those grand champs, and I just wanted to play and improve and, you know, learn from getting completely clapped by players who were like, hopelessly better than me. Now, it's tough because both scenarios have pros and cons, a hard reset and a soft reset. So I think Psyonix is probably making the right decision keeping the soft reset, but I understand why higher ranked players like the hard reset because they basically get like champ two or three right away and then they get grand champ in a couple games. All right guys, so I was sitting and thinking about my 10th thing that I was gonna add to the list because I had nine and I just couldn't think of a 10th thing that Psyonix had removed from Rocket League and I really wanted this to be 10. And then it hit me. Arguably the biggest thing that Cyanix removed from Rocket League is unique car hitboxes. So I received an email recently from a Grand Champ player who has like over 5,000 hours. And he is, shall we say, very serious about Rocket League. He basically wanted to reach out to me in hopes that I would take some time to talk about this issue. So if you don't already know what happened, basically there's now like five standardized hitboxes that any given car falls into. So there aren't any cars that are completely out of this standard hitbox. All of the cars fall within to at least one of these five categories. Whereas before, each car had their own unique hitbox and their own unique stats. Now, this player was basically making the case to me that removing unique hitboxes really hurt the game. It made it so that the player base would just keep choosing the same cars. Basically, he believes that there are cars that were truly good cars, that they were viable and could still be viable at the highest level, and now they've been completely overlooked because of the current meta. Basically, why would you choose another car with the Octane hitbox when you're used to the Octane and it really isn't any different than those other cars? Whereas maybe, you know, you're uncomfortable with a different car, but because it has its own unique hitbox and stats, you could get over that because it could be better. Now, I don't know if it's enough to actually change the meta, that is having unique hitboxes and stats. But regardless, I don't think that this was a totally warranted change. There could be more to it than I realize, but I think a lot of people are frustrated by this. So it is something to think about. All right, guys, these are my 10 things that Psyonix removed from Rocket League. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Make sure to leave a like if you did, and let me know down below in the comments what thing that was removed that made you most sad. Also, let me know if there's anything I missed, because I'm sure that there probably is. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Peace out.